Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to Baseball Domain. Um, today's video, we're going to be talking about the five possible places for Francisco Lindor to be going. Uh, the Indians came out today and have said that they intend to trade him, which we all kind of knew, but kind of nice that they have clarified it. Uh, so I want to go over five destinations that he could go to. Uh, fun to always make these mock trades. Um, none of them will turn, turn out right, but it's always fun to make them. Um, so yeah. But before we get into this video, uh, if you're new here, be sure to subscribe. We're on the road to 50 subscribers right now. Uh, share this with your friends. Maybe they like baseball. This is the place to be. Like the video. Um, and, you know, comment where you think Lindor's gonna go. And will he sign an extension? So, let's get into this video. Okay, so before we get started, I decided we should change the hat to the Cleveland Indians because we're talking about the Cleveland Indians this whole video. I now have teams on made up the trades. I now have the ex whether they will sign an extension on or whether they will get re-signed a free agency if they will just go. So, uh, you're going to have to hear me on some of these. Some of these are pretty weird, but we're getting into this. So, yeah. The very first spot, number one on the list that I think he could go, and I think everyone agrees with this one, is Lindor to the Dodgers. Uh, Lindor to the Dodgers has been a rumor for about two or three years now. At least two years. Um, basically, in the main, in every trade, we all have an idea that Corey Seager's probably going to go. Gavin Lux is going to stay. Uh, which is insane to say. Because Corey Seager just won NLCS MVP and World Series MVP. And now we're thinking that he's going to get traded. Which is insane. So, that's there um i think they will have that little gap in between that they will talk about an extension they will come across with an extension uh so he will stay there for long term and now my trade is that the dodgers get lindor with an extension obviously and the indians are going to get tony gonsolin an mlb starter he's played in the big leagues this year he can be your number three guy behind carrasco and then behind bieber uh number two is Corey seager coming through he's gonna be coming over as well that's an MLB-ready shortstop. Uh, free agent, same time as Lindor is. Now, he's not as good as Lindor, but I think he would be cheaper than what Lindor would be. And as Cleveland has said, they are tight on money, which I don't know, kind of insane to think about because I didn't think they would be. But they are, so Corey Seager coming over would be a cheaper guy to take on long-term, and he's your MLB shortstop for a while. Uh, so... There's their two MLB players they're going to be getting. Now, in the prospects, I have Kiebert Ruiz, who is a catching prospect. The catching position for Cleveland in general is super weak. Uh, Roberto Perez, kind of just, eh, he's done his thing. He hasn't done anything, like, insane. He's not super offensive. He's not super defensive. He's just kind of the average catcher that, you know, you want your starter to be. But you can always get better. And that's what they went for Francisco Mejia. He hasn't really turned into anything, but I think Kiebert Ruiz, who is a catcher, would perf work perfectly with that team, give him a year or so to develop. he bring him up, and he's ready to go right there. And I think he'd be a better catcher than uh, Roberto Perez, Francisco Mejia, Austin Hedges. It's just it's an upgrade in general for them. And the final prospect com coming over is DJ Peters. He's an outfielder. They are looking for an outfielder. They need outfielders. They've traded for outfielders twice. It's why they've lost Clevenger. It's why they've lost Bauer. They Ever since they've lost Michael Brantley, they've been lost in the outfield with that bat. They got nothing out there. Getting DJ Peters, letting him develop a couple of years, bringing him up, seems perfect. He's going to be a good MLB bat. He's going to be a good defensive center fielder, left fielder. I don't know where you're going to put him in the outfield. But he will be good. He'll be an upgrade over what they have right now, which isn't really anything. They got about ooh, they got about four corner outfielders and zero center fielders, and they need the center fielders. So I think DJ Peters could fit into that center field slot. That's the trade. So it's Francisco Lindor for Tony Gonsolin, Corey Seager, Kiebert Ruiz, and DJ Peters. Uh, they only have to give up two prospects because they're already giving up two MLB studs in a sense. If you like, kind of get that. So. Yes. Um, next trade is going across the highway, and we're going to the Angels. The Angels are going to probably lose out on shortstop Andrelton Simmons during this offseason. 
So getting a shortstop in Francisco Lindor would be worth it. He will also come with an extension. I just don't think it'll be for as long as he would if he was a Dodger. I think about eight years, seven years, where I think he could be 11, 10 years, maybe 12 with the Dodgers. So I think eight-year extension with Lindor for the Angels kind of bring him decent, like 37, I want to say he's 29, or how, oh fuck, how old is he? I don't know how old he is. Anyways, eight years, you get eight years of good Lindor with good Rendon, with good Trout, that's a great offense. Um, so yeah, on the return is David Fletcher. Now, I know everyone in LA kind of likes David Fletcher, but hear me out. If you're going to trade for Lindor, are you okay giving up David Fletcher? Lindor is going to be your shortstop for the next eight years. Are you okay with losing Fletcher? I think you would be. Francisco Lindor is easily the number one shortstop in baseball. And I think if you can get him over for David Fletcher, it's great. Um, next in that trade is Brandon Marsh, who's an outfield prospect. I don't think they're going to get Joe Adele. I think he's going to be the one untouchable in this whole deal. Is like, hey... Like, for pro like untouchable prospects, it's going to be Joe Dallas kind of like, hey, you know, you're not going to get him. But here's Brandon Marsh, who's their not rate guy, like guy right underneath. Uh, outfield bat, going to really help out. So, Brandon Marsh. So, next in the trade with going along with David Fletcher and Brandon Marsh is Chris Rodriguez. He's a right-handed pitcher. I believe he's their 10th ranked prospect. No, he's 6th ranked prospect. Right-handed pitcher. He's MLB ETAs in tw uh, two years. Um... Now, I know people would think Reed Detmers, but I don't think they're going to trade him. I They just drafted him. I know they've traded for they've traded recent draft picks, like the year they got drafted. I don't think it's going to happen. Um, I think Chris Rodriguez is going to fit that package a little bit better than what Reed Detmers has. Um, he's a plus arm, good pitcher just in general. So I think he goes along well with that. And finally is... In this deal is Kevin Mayton. Mayton. I don't really know how you say his name. I'm um, sorry. He's kind of like that super utility guy in a sense. He can play second base, shortstop, third base. Uh, he's their 24th ranked prospect right now in the Angels system. He's got a good bat, good arm, good glove. From my, like for minor league stuff, he's like kind of like average, maybe just a bit above. Uh, he kind of fits the bill perfectly. You can put him anywhere, you know. If you don't, like, you can see you lose Cesar Hernandez in a couple years, he can go there. You got David Fletcher at short. Maybe he could go to third. You want to move Fletcher to second. He just kind of fits an infield perfectly. You can put him wherever in the infield. He looks comfortable. He can play it very well. Probably played above average in the big league level. I think he fits that deal perfectly. And the fact that he's not, the fact that it's just going to be those guys, just because, you know, David Fletcher, MLB player already, very good. And then Brandon Marsh and Chris Rodriguez already, like, they're those are two top s 10 prospects, top six prospects. They got the number two and the number six prospect right there. That's going to throw huge value. And then Kevin Mighton kind of, like, to seal the deal. Uh, four players uh, and coming with an extension. So the final trade is Lindor to the Angels for David Fletcher, Brandon Marsh, Chris Rodriguez, and Kevin Mayton um, with this deal. If this deal does happen, Colton Wong also comes over. So your middle infield is Colton Wong and Francisco Lindor with Anthony Rendon on the third base side. By the way, Angels fans, just saying, if this deal happens, I think Colton Wong comes over too. So would you take Colton Wong and Francisco Lindor for David Fletcher, Brandon Marsh, Chris Rodriguez, and Kevin Mayton in the end? I think you would. Who wouldn't type thing, you know? So there's that. Now, right in the middle of our list, number three are the New York Mets. Uh, I only have three players on them because I don't think he's going to sign an extension. He has come out and he has said he doesn't like New York sports media. He doesn't like the whole ne playing in New York vibe, which is why I don't have the Yankees on the list. That and they don't really need a shortstop in a sense. Um, so I don't think that... Lindor signs an extension. I think he goes into free agency, which is why I only have three players and none are top prospects, by the way. So for the Mets, you're going to get a year of Lindor and you're going to be trading Ahmed Rosario, who was a former top prospect, kind of like an average, below average shortstop in the big league level, kind of starting to come around now. Um, but I don't think he's ever going to be to what Lindor was ever going to, like what Lindor is doing right now. 
I think Mets fans would be happy chipping him off for Lindor. You got to keep Andres or Ed, um, the him, uh, Andres Jimenez, your top shortstop prospect. I think Mets fans are okay with that. J.D. Davis goes over as well. He's a third base bat. You know, plays third base all right. And then Brand and you got Brandon Nimmo going over, who's an outfielder as well. If it's that outfield bat, he can play center field. He play right field, left field. Not that you need a right fielder or left fielder. You need a center fielder. Brandon Nimmo goes over. He fits perfectly with the Met or with the Indians. Um, again, no extension, just because I don't think he would want to stay in New York. In a sense, he sounds like he's very set on playing in LA, whether that's for the Dodgers or the Angels. So there's that. So the final trade is Francisco Lindor to the Mets. For Ahmed Rosario, J.D. Davis, and Brandon Nimmo. Um, Mets fans, would you take a year of Lindor for that trade? Or do you think he has to come with an extension? And if he comes with an, ex with an extension, who else would you add in the trade to make sure he comes and signs an extension? Let me know in the comments down below, Mets fans. Um, the fourth trade, I'm going with the Cincinnati Reds. And the Reds do need a shortstop. Freddie Galvis kind of doesn't just fit that, you know. Um, they've been aggressive last year, and I think they'll be aggressive again in a way this year. I think going for Francisco Lindor works. I don't think he signs an extension right away. I think he goes in saying he wants to test free agency. and then. But I think in the end he re-signs. Uh, so that's why this deal is going to be a little bit smaller packaged again. But hear me out. Okay. So going over to Cleveland is going to be Nick, uh, Nick Senzel, a uh, former top prospect, kind of just playing. He's an average player. He, good back, good glove. It's just very good. You know, he is a solid everyday MLB player that lots of MLB teams would love to have. And I think the Reds are in a very good position that they could trade him for Lindor. Next is Lyon Richardson, the 11th ranked prospect, right-handed pitcher. Um... And he's, he's a good pitcher. Two years until he's kind of ready, you know. Um, he needs pitching. Uh, I think that's all pretty well known. And it's do need pitching. Kind of got Bieber and Carrasco. And then that's kind of it. I think getting Lion Richardson helps that team. Not next year, not the year after. but Not next year, but 2022 and beyond. I think he will really help that team. So getting Lion Richardson helps. Also, before we go further... I was going to add a fourth prospect, fourth player, but I don't think they're going to have... They might not have to because they're going to give a top prospect away. So, yeah. The final player going over is Arcidius Aquino, the Punisher himself. A little bit of a down near this year in a sense, but, I mean, you can't. it's hard to copy what he did the year before for his rookie kind of stuff in September. So, you know, saying it's a down year, meh, I still think... There's Aquino going over to Cincinnati, or to Cleveland helps. Now he's a corner outfielder. I get that. And it kind of messes with everything that's going on there because they already have so many corner outfielders. But I think they would take his bat and be okay with him playing right field and then maybe training someone in the offseason if they can get this deal done earlier in the offseason. Training someone to play center field. You get to keep Aquino's bat in there. Worst case scenario, no, he has to go to DH. But I think that's kind of Josh Naylor's place right now. So getting Arcidius Aquino really helps. Um, but he doesn't sign an extension right away, which is why I think they will only have to train three players over instead of having to go for more. Because a year for Lindor, again, isn't really a whole lot in a sense. You know, uh, so there's that. But I do think in free agency, he will resign. I think he will test out. Cincinnati will kind of drop him a blank check and he'll go, I'm going there. So there's that trade. Now, if you think he should, ha there should be a fourth player in there. I have Jose Garcia and I have Jamison Hanna both in there. Kind of like if you need a fourth, there's those two guys you can pick from. Very good prospects. Uh, Jose Garcia, where is he? Jamison Hanna is an outfield prospect. He'll be ready next year. He's the 15th overall guy, so I think he would fit in well. And then Jose Garcia. Where are you, Jose Garcia? 
Jose Garcia is their sixth ranked prospect. He needs a shortstop. So I don't know. I don't know if that one goes in well. I don't know if they said his MLB ATA was last year. I don't know if he played last year. So let me know. Those are kind of my two guys that are on the side. If you need a fourth guy to send over, because you're not going to be sending three quality MLB players, send them one in a bit. Uh, I can see those two guys going over. So, yes, there's that trade. And now the final trade. Um, it, this isn't a biased trade or anything. I just really think this trade could happen. And hey, that's him coming to Toronto. Uh, like I said, didn't want to add the Yankees. I don't think they need a shortstop. Glover Torres is getting their guy. They uh, He said he doesn't like New York sports, which is why he's not signing an extension with the Mets. But I still think the Mets would be dumb enough to trade for him, even if it's for a year. That sounds stupid, saying dumb enough to trade for the best shortstop for a year. I don't know if they're going to compete next year really well. You don't know what type of season he's going to have. So trading for Lindor for a year might not even be 162. Not really worth it. So, yes. So honorable mentions the Yankees and the Braves. But the final trade of this deal, or of this video, is going to be him coming to Toronto. Now, Toronto went after Lindor last year. They had immense interest in him last year. Uh, there's Cleveland sports writers who think he could go to Toronto. Toronto's front office is Shapiro and Atkins, who were responsible for the ones... They were the responsible ones for drafting Lindor back in... I don't know what year he got drafted. Back when he got drafted, he was the reason why. So, you know, they're going to hold like that special place. Like, hmm, they were the ones who gave me the chance. So I think he will always think about Toronto in a chance. It's a young team. He will be a leader. But he knows the front office very well. He's got very good history with the front office. They never wanted to trade him. They never wanted to move him. They tried. They want to keep, in a sense, they wanted to keep him. New ownership, or new front office stuff. They went, mm. So I think the fact that they never shopped Lindor, they gave Lindor the chance is going to really help Toronto in a sense to being able to sign him to an extension. So, here is my proposal for this trade. Going over with an extension is Lindor and an extension to Toronto. Going to Cleveland is top shortstop prospect or Elvis Martinez. I can't Groshans as a third baseman, by the way, which is why Groshans is not the top shortstop prospect. It's just So, top shortstop prospect or Elvis Martinez very good shortstop. Uh, he'll be ready in a couple of years. Definitely will help that team. I just got a very good bat, plus defense, plus arm. Just, he would be an above average shortstop. Will he ever be a top five? Probably not. Will he be a top 10? Yes. I think he has the potential. His ceiling is a top 10 shortstop in the league. I think it's a risk. If you're going to end up trading Lindor, which the Indians have said they wanted to, I think a risk, you can risk getting or Elvis Martinez for it. The young guys, I don't think there's... The young guys is between Guriel, Biggio, Bichette, and Guerrero, and Pearson. They're untouchable. I don't think they're going to get moved. Uh, now, I would, wouldn't would be surprised if maybe a Biggio or a Guriel went over. Do I want that to happen? No. But would I be surprised? No. I could see it happening. To me, I think they're untouchables, though. So I wouldn't trade them personally, but you never know. So that's why I have Aralvis Martinez. Next, I have Alec Manoa, starting pitcher, prospect. Played, what well, was supposed to play, I think, double A last year, but I think he got on to the 60-player pool. Very good arm. Um, I think he taught, he's got a, like, I think he tops out near 100. I think he's, like, 98. Very good arm. Plus, plus pitches. Uh, good fastball, good changeup, good curveball or slider thing. Very good. Uh, he'll be ready in a couple of years. He definitely helps that rotation out. He'll be a number three or number four guy. Will he ever be an ace? No. Will he ever be a number two guy? Potentially, but I think his area right now, if you wanted to put him on a roster and see where he was going to be in a couple of years, I think he's a three or a four guy. I don't think he's ever an ace, but I don't think he's a number five. He's a three guy, in my opinion, possibly a four on a really good rotation. Next is Eric Pardino. Now, mind you, he has injury problems which is why this deal is going to have another player involved. If I, Eric Pardino didn't have injury issues, I don't think we'd have to add a fifth, but he does have injury issues. He's young, had Tommy John, but he's a very good right-handed pitcher. 
he definitely has the makings of potentially being an ace. Worst case, you know, if you not worst case scenario, if you keep if you have him Bieber around for a long period of time, you have a one two punch of Bieber, Pardino, and then you can have Alec Manoa in like that's like their rotation in three years. That's their one two three triple headed monster, very good. Those two guys between Manoa and Pardino have very good upside, very worth the risk in a sense. They got very good stuff. Cleveland's done a great job with being able to develop very good pitchers. They do very good with that, and I think having Mano and Pardino over there helps their careers so much. Next on the list is Randall Gritchick, who um, has now been known for trying to recruit Trevor Bauer. So, yeah. But he's an outfielder, center fielder, right fielder. I think he's more of a right fielder in my opinion, but on a very corner outfield heavy team, he's definitely their center fielder. He's got a very good bat. Little inconsistent at time, but you know he gets his streaky moments, and when he's hot, he is hot, hot. Like he, during his hot streaks, he will bat about three fifty to four hundred. He's very good, but when he's cold, he's not as good. So a very inconsistent bat, but at the end of the day, end of your year, he'll probably give you two sixty five, two seventy five average, twenty to thirty home runs. 78 to 80 RBIs, very good defense, great arm, great glove. Definitely helps that outfield out, and a great leader. And then finally on the list is Anthony K. Now you can use him in the rotation as a 4 or 5 guy. He's a good lefty arm. Or, as we saw the Blue Jays do this year, you could put him into the bullpen. Very uh, dominant in the bullpen this year. Very dominant. Got good stuff. Um... I think he could be in the rotation. I think he's a four or five guy in the rotation. So there's that trade. With the extension, I think he signs 10 years, about 300 million. So yeah, there's my trade. Uh, tell me who should be on the list and who shouldn't be on the list. Tell me why I'm biased for picking Toronto because I'm a Blue Jay fan. Um, what do you think of the trades? Are they good? Are they bad? Are they meh? I think I could probably rework some of the trades, but... In a sense, I could also see them working. So, yes. And where do you think Lindor is going to go eh, during this offseason? Because they say they're going to trade him, which, I mean, everyone kind of knew. But it's nice that they're kind of coming on saying, hey, yeah, he's not back next year. Have fun. So, yes. There's that. Um, subscribe if you get to the channel if you guys are brand new. We're on the road to 50 subs. Uh, share this with the chat. Share this channel with your friends. If they like plays If they like baseball, this is the place to be. We're talking baseball every day, every other day. So, yeah. And then like the video if you guys are... If you guys like the video, hit the like button. Uh, subscribe. It said that. And then hit the bell next to it. Very cool. It tells you when I upload. You don't want to miss an upload. I got sometimes amazing videos. So I'll catch you on the next video. Peace out. Goodbye. Poof.